I'm proud. No one thought we'd be playing a championship game. No one. We fought to get here. So the bar is high. The standard is high once you come this far. So once you've had success like this, you reach for the sky. So I don't want to just come here once and be done. I, I want to be back here, and I think that in the future, Arizona will be back. Without any further ado, we are absolutely thrilled to welcome our new women's basketball coach, Adia Barnes. It, it was always here, it was never somewhere else. So this is a dream job to me. What really sparked it before the process even started, I took a tour when we were here playing and I was like, wow. I was just, I had those butterflies in my stomach that I did when I came here as a player. I'm the former coach at Arizona. I'm Adia Barnes coach. With 15 on the clock to Barnes, Arizona lead. Adia, when I recruited her, was an undersized, under-recruited player, but I saw something special in her probably before she even did. But it's, uh, I believe the four most important words you can ever say to set someone is, I believe in you. And I believe in Adia Barnes. I thought she was gonna be good because she'd been coached by so many different people. She played in Europe for years. She played in the WNBA. And she just, she had, had such a, you know, a smattering and a, a feel for so many different styles that I knew when she got a head coaching job that she was really going to be able to incorporate all that into what her personality was. Out to Mark. And only 10 seconds left on the shot clock. And a three on nothing on a steal at the other end. Barnes and it's two to nothing. Adia inherits a program that she helped build that she helped cultivate, that she put her stamp on. And by the time she gets back there as a coach, it's in bad shape. It's in tatters. So the state of the program when I was hired was, uh, we were down, of course. I remember specifically being at Arizona and multiple times, like, <laughs> Coach Neighbors making jokes referring to Arizona. And I remember being like, that's my school, like, <laughs> you know, so annoyed. For Arizona, a new coach, they're just trying to rebuild. They want to win a couple before this season ends. She inherited a team that was a mess. She inherited a team that needed a whole lot of help. I remember talking to her first year she was there, and she was just like, she just gave you that idea of love, like, mm, this is not good. And, and she knew it. No one in the town had anything good to say about Arizona. I just was like, wow. I didn't hear anything good literally for the first three months. The numbers certainly don't lie. 16 turnovers for Arizona in that first half, resulting in 20 points for Washington State. The difference. At 20 of their 32 points for Washington State have come because of four seed turnovers. I played against the Dia. We were in the same year. And then I called her games when she was with the Seattle Storm and won a championship there. And when she got hired at Arizona, I thought, okay, it's her alma mater, but that is a tough hill to climb. It, the program at that time just wasn't in good shape. And I thought, well, if anybody can do it, Adia can, but it's her first ever head coaching job. We have to constantly have coaches motivate you, give you energy, and we shouldn't have to do that. So I made like, it, uh, I just a conscious effort. I said, okay, we're not gonna be bad at everything. We're not gonna be bad at academics, bad on the court and like people don't like us in the community. So I was like, we're gonna be great in the community. We're gonna be like all stars. Hey, we're here with Habitat for Humanity. I've been here since, we've been up since 545 and started here at 615. It has been really fun to see. Just, she's a players coach right now. The players respect her and have fun working with her. And as the all time leading scorer in Arizona history, they know that she's been there and done that and has had success. And you know Coach Barnes wants this Arizona program back to where it belongs. And she's got a good recruiting class coming in next year. I'm sure people doubted me, like, can she coach? Can she do it? Can she only recruit? And I didn't really care. I don't care about that stuff because I, I really believe myself and and what I'm capable of doing. So I knew I was going to learn. Yes, was it, was it perfect my first year? No. <laughs> like, did I make mistakes? Yes, I probably made 500 mistakes. But it's like, that's a part of it. You're going to make mistakes when you're new. But I knew that I was going to work. I knew that I know basketball. I knew um, I could recruit, develop, and I knew why I chose Arizona. So I believed it, and I just bet on myself. It just, everything was not the way she 
experienced her Arizona ways and days. She had the guts to take that program and say, I really think I can do something here. From the tip, it is one war at a time. We're not looking at the score. We're playing a game within a game. And we, our goal is to win every war. If we lose one, we are killing it on the next one. Okay, let's go. My first year at Arizona wasn't bad because when I first got here, there was five seniors. So they were hungry. I think, you know, you, when you rock the boat, people are like re-energized. So they played hard. We're the good group of kids that just wanted to win. And so they played their hearts out for me. The next year, it was very hard to recruit because the players that I wanted to recruit, I couldn't recruit at that time. We were a not a good program. So I remember telling them, this is my vision. This is what I think that we can do. This is how you can help us do it. But I had to sell a vision with no proof. Lucia Alonzo, who will be running the show. Jalea Bennett, one of two seniors for the Wildcats, as well as Cat Wright, the other senior. And then it's Sam Thomas. They are so impressed with this young freshman. It's definitely for the vision. Um, she told me that she was honest with me. We're a rebuilding program. We're not going to be top of the pack or anything. And I kind of just believed in her and the coaching staff that I'm going to be the best player that I can be, whether we're winning or losing. That's what bought me in. I wasn't really sure about the Pac-12 or even Arizona. I just, I was so used to Texas basketball. So when I came on my visit, it was, it was amazing. It was everything I wanted in a school and a coaching staff. There was nowhere else I wanted to go. There were a lot of people that like, why are you going to Arizona? Like, they're not good. And then the defense by the Cardinal caused a lot of problems for Arizona. I wanted to make an impact immediately, and I knew Arizona was a school that I could do that. But also just Coach Adia just laying that foundation down and telling us that she believes in us and she has this vision for the program to reach heights that it had never had before. Coach Barnes just always made sure I was comfortable. I could be myself around her. She was just that person, and she's like a big sister to me. It's like, hey, like, I have to come here with her and do something special. The biggest key for Arizona clearly was when Ari decided to follow her from UW because she, she wanted to play for Adia. And when you have a superstar that believes in you, and think about that for a second. She's going to Arizona and they're really not very good. But I think it was that confidence that they had in each other and the synergy that they had. We're a dynamic duo. I had to sit out the 2017-2018 season and that was torture. It was tough. Uh, there was days I didn't have motivation. I'm like, man, like, I can't play. I can't help my teammates. It was tough because, like, when you're in that time as a player, every game you're going in, we can win this. There's no pressure on us. Like, we can win this game. And then the end result, my freshman year was usually blowing out by 20. You know, obviously, the, the Adia doesn't have the wins that they would like this year, but practices, attitudes have been very, very good. This is how this game will end, 65 to 40, as Oregon State is able to beat Arizona for a ninth straight time. And the Cal Bears sneak out of Tucson, the number 23 team in the nation. But Arizona, improvement and improvement every single game. People around campus talk and stuff like that. So no one's really like making fun of us, but you know, you're like, you're not a top dog. No one cares about women's basketball, that kind of stuff. We didn't have a lot of fans at the time, so that was also hard. We're coming to you live from Tucson, Arizona. I am Cindy Brunson, and we are so glad to have you along the way. No lie, I would sit at the TV table and I could hear my own voice echo throughout the McHale Center. Nobody was invested and nobody cared. They've always been on board with men's basketball, but it had been a long time since they had really had something to care about for women's basketball. The Wildcats survive a double overtime affair against Southern Utah. It's, it's a crazy feeling of how we really started at the bottom, like we did, and people weren't sure if we were gonna be able to be successful just because of how, how it was for years before we, we came. But we all had the vision that we were gonna do something that people weren't expecting us to do. Cats and Huskies getting ready to get underway. Arizona wearing its home white, Washington wearing black. I don't think I ever like questioned if I made the right decision just because I love this school. But I think after we beat Washington, that kind of brought us to 11th place, not 12th place in the pack. 72 to 70, Arizona gets the win. And like we were all celebrating in the locker room. And then after like we left and everyone like calmed down, I was like, 
we're really celebrating because we're not in last place. Like we made it to 11th place, but we're not in last place. And I was like, is that really what we want to be celebrating and getting happy about? And we knew they would hit a couple, but I felt like we just gave them 27 points in the first quarter is way too much. But I felt like once we settled down, we really fought and I'm just proud of the way we battled. I did make some changes in the program that I knew would take us a step back. I knew we were going to be bad, but I never thought I'd ever be six wins bad. I, I thought even if I'm bad, we're going to win at least 10 games, so I, I didn't expect that. So are you ready? Hey, yeah, I'm ready. We have like 30 minutes. It is different, definitely plan for a married couple, but I feel like all 13 of us on the team are their other children besides Mateo, and they treat us just like they would treat Mateo with respect, and they really love and care about us. I think for me personally, there was a lot of low points. That was that same year, like my dad died, like the miscarriage, it was just a really hard year, just overall. One low point was like sitting at the game, like I just had a miscarriage last night and I was at the hospital till two o'clock in the morning and I'm out here coaching a game. I think that was just like, wow, like what am I doing? It was just a hard year. But Sam got to play like 40 minutes a game, so she got better. But Aerie, she got to sit out. She got to see what it's like to lose and make us hungry. Made for it on three. One, two, three. Made made for it. She started this hashtag made for it way back when she started. And I asked her, what is made for it? She goes, I want a player who wants to have the tough days as well as the good days. That they embrace the challenge. That they want to push the rock uphill because they know once it starts rolling down the other side, it's all going to be great. Aerie came from Washington to Arizona. No one thought like she should come. They were like, why are you going to Arizona? Arizona's bad. Like you can't win there. And like she did it with us. I always say she chose me twice. Um, came to Washington, I wasn't the head coach, but then came with me to Arizona on a leap of faith, not knowing what Arizona would be like, not knowing what her future would be. Suffocating defense by the Wildcats, and I can tell you I have not used that phrase in a very long time. <laughs> no one thought she'd be airy. The Wildcats get the victory. Stunning number 17, Arizona State. Well, they call Ari McDonald the game changer, and she was all of that today. I asked her to do a lot. I asked her to be everything. I asked her to take all the shots, play all the defense, all these things. Asked to build things um, you know, around her, so it takes a special person with a tremendous amount of um, resiliency and, and determination and belief in herself because she did it. I mean, she pressed for me for 38 minutes a game, like scored a lot of points, like did so many things, was a captain. But she did it with all pride and, and want to build it with me. We have confidence. We're on a 10 game winning streak. We're playing some good basketball. So that's where I wanted to be at. This is exactly where I wanted to be. So it shows me that we're gonna be one of the best defensive teams in the, in the conference also. We have a chance to be. Now we just have to sustain that. Tenacious finish by these Wildcats. Thomas trying to do anything for Cal. Fires up the triple, no, and that is how it will end. This is a huge win for Arizona. The second win over a top 25 team. Arizona is for real. She deserves everything because she put the work in. She's a great person. And she believed in this, and I believed in her, and it was a great like uh, formula. I don't know if I'll ever get that with another player. I don't know, I, I hope I do, um, but it was special. And I think that no one thought she'd come to Arizona and be All-American. No one thought she'd come to Arizona and be Player of the Year, Defensive Player of the Year. No one thought any of those things. If you would have told me she's gonna be one of the best players in the country, I would have said, well, she's gotta work, I don't know. But she did it, it's her work that she put in. As we start winning, then we did so much community work, and that is something Coach Barnes like emphasize in our program, like we need to give back and just make impact on others' lives. And so we start doing com more community work and we start winning. And the fans just start to come out and little little girls come up to us talking about we inspire them and just we're making their like whole years. And so, I mean, that helped a lot. It's go time from Vegas. The Pac-12 Women's Basketball Tournament continues from the MGM Grand Garden Arena. Top seed and defending champ Oregon taking on upset-minded Arizona in quarterfinal action. Three, one, two, three. Hey,
Look at the look into Reese. Oh, what an assist! Arizona came ready to play, but just too much firepower with the Ducks. We were kind of bummed at first, like we were like first four out or something like that. So we were like, oh, we're not going to make it to the tournament, the NCAA tournament. And then I think honestly, that's it was the best thing for us to be able to host every single round. JP did a great job helping us out with that. Winning in front of a sold out arena. All, all the sports teams were here. All the fans, the original fans, new fans, little kids, old people. It was just, it was a good community building, I think. That's right here, okay? All these people are here. You're punching them in the face hard fast. Welcome to the final four matchup here in the WNIT tournament between the Arizona Wildcats and the TCU Horned Frogs. <laughs> Just like it feels normal to have this place packed now, which is what I think it should feel like. So it's just crazy you know, how much we had in the beginning. Just seeing the packed house with the fans, it's being really loud and just seeing how we came together and we were playing for each other. We were all bought in listening to Coach Barnes. Blocked by Sam Thomas, the biggest block of the game by Thomas. That and that will do it as Arizona will play in the WNIT Championship on Saturday. And the roar of the Wildcats belongs to Arizona, the 2019 WNIT champion. I plan to have many more sellouts, but you never forget your first. You guys are amazing. You guys sold this place out first time ever for Arizona women's basketball. This is a historic day. It gave us momentum heading into the next season. Like we got our defenses right. We were playing suffocating defense and we were just playing together. Everyone was doing their part, which made us a whole a unit. And so that was the turning point for us. And we had to kick it up the next season. We must start off with this. We have to punch them in the face really fast and early. We cannot start off slow. We cannot start off turning the ball over. We can't. We gotta play our game. We're at home, so we can play loose. We can really, really look for attack. Yes. Hey, 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 you guys. No one, not one player. Take care of your teammates. Do not let us nail, let, let your post player or your guard get nailed in the backcourt. So post players call it. Hey, Sam, set one. Yeah, yeah Sam, you can set one, Sam. May board on one, three, two, one. May board. Heading into my junior season, our mindset was to do better than we did. Winning the NIT, like that was our momentum. But we like didn't want to settle. We wanted to do great things. We wanted to go to the tournament. We want to be top four, no less than top six in the Pac-12. So those are our goals. Everything changed when I tore my Achilles. When that happened, I was just like, I need to get back closer to home because I just want to be around my family and things like that. And Adia was the first person that called me. We have this good relationship. She has a story that, you know, I broke up with her the first time to go to Indiana and then I came back to her. Just being with her and just having the, the coaching staff that we had, I knew that I wanted to be here. Arizona, for the first time since February 26th of 2000, is able to beat its rival, Arizona State, in Tempe and get to 12 and 0 along the way. You better not take a playoff if you're going to play for Adia Barnes. You better get after it. You better pay attention to detail. You better not take a playoff. And if you commit to me, you're committing to this program and to this community. And little by little, the basketball IQ also on the rise. She was able to get the kids physically to buy in and mentally to just be that much sharper. A stunner for the Arizona Wildcats, Joan. A huge stunner. I, I am so impressed with Arizona. As I said all game, this best I've seen them play. Started with their star, Ari McDonald. UCLA is a great team. For the last time if this happened was March 2012 when the Arizona Wildcats actually beat the UCLA Bruins. And the one thing that you've done such a great job of is your ability to use social media to, you know, cheer on your team, but to reach out into your community and, and bring them closer. 
And is that is that just part of who you are, or did you did you learn to do that, or how is your connection to social and your connection to your fans and the synergy created? How, how does that come about? Um, I think that it's just natural to me. I I think it's easy for me here because this was my college, um, and so it, all the foundations started here for me. But I don't. I, it's not really a plan. I just kind of like it started in the NIT. I was just getting the numbers from people, and so I would tweet it out. So for me, it was just, um, it's an easy thing to tweet and be like, let's go. Ladia Barnes, she's built an energy here in Tucson. Oh, they love her here in Tucson. She was obviously an awesome player, but I'll tell you, she's maybe even better loved here as a coach. They love her. They love her team. But it's all about giving back to the community. And what what do you know? They've all come out. They, she asked for people to come out. I, uh, there's a big crowd here tonight. A lot of energy in this building and certainly excited to have you with us. I think we almost sold out Mikhail. It was an insane run. I mean, we thought we were in the lead. I we watched the game all the time. Like we had like a 10 point lead in the last minute and then we ended up only winning by like two. I'm like, how did Stanford come back in a minute eight point lead? And I'm like, that's just how Stanford is. Williams, little runner off the back of the iron. They fight for the basketball. The losing streak to Stanford is over. It's over! Wow, what a game. So happy for Arizona in Adia Barnes. I think it showed me okay because like two or three years prior we'd lose by 40 points. I knew we were improving and we were getting to the next level. How, how on moments like this, how much does it mean to have the people that helped to bring you to this point part of this crowd? I just want to make them proud. That's one of my lifelong goals, just make my parents proud and just I sacrificed a lot. They sacrificed a lot for me to get to where I am now. And just, I want to make them proud. The scene is Las Vegas. The quarterfinal stage is set for the Pac-12 Women's Basketball Tournament. Arizona moving on to the semifinals. They will await the winner of Oregon, Utah. Can the Wildcats find a way to slow down Sabrina? Scoring, facilitating, rebounding, and making this high-octane offense go. We're here to have fun. There is zero pressure. We go out and we just play basketball. We do our best. If we do these things, we win the game. You have open shots, you take it with confidence. You don't second-guess yourself. Together on three. One, two, three. Together. Together. McDonald looks right, goes left. Ionescu extends it. Reese, second effort is good as she goes flying. And Oregon moving back into the championship game once again. For the third straight year, tip your cap to Adia Barnes. Yeah, obviously, the NCAA tournament is what's next for you guys. You are going to host the first two rounds. Where are you at mentally and physical heading into the next tournament that's what's ahead? I'm feeling good. My team is they're playing great basketball right now. And all we can do is just regroup, rest a little bit, and it's on to the next. New alarm bells ringing tonight on the coronavirus outbreak in this country. As the number of dead rises, more confirmed cases tonight in New York and Los Angeles. The NBA is suspending the season. NCAA has made the decision to cancel the men's and women's tournament. I remember everything crashing down when we couldn't compete in a tournament. I remember that and it was just, it was heartbreaking. Our story was written perfectly and now it's just a pause. Of course it was for safety reasons we understand, but it was just, it was tough. I think it was just, it was sad just knowing that that was the end for us. But I mean, I think it kind of also made us hungry for this season and having to be able to kind of rewrite what we could have the previous. Obviously, one of the transfers that has made a huge impact on your team is Ari McDonald. I know that last time we talked, she was still not sure whether or not she would be back for her final year of eligibility or if she was going to go to the WNBA. But have you been able to talk to her and, and where, where's her mind at and head at right now? Yeah, so we talk a lot. Um, I think that there's no pressure because she doesn't have to decide till April 10th. And for me, there's there's really no pressure whether it's now or in a couple of weeks. Um, you know, we, I just always, you always have to plan for if, you know, the situation, if she didn't come back. So that's kind of what you have to plan for and build your team. But I think that um, for her, there's so many opportunities for her um, and for our program. I, I don't see her not coming back, but you never know. All right, 
Erin McDonald, I want to start by saying thank you because you provided maybe the best news that I've gotten in the last two weeks or so when you announced that you were coming back for your final year of eligibility. Just towards the end of the season, I was kind of leaning on like getting drafted or going to the draft this year, but then I thought about like my injury and just me not being 100%, so I'm happy with my decision. I'm at peace with it. I decided to come back because I wanted to earn my master's degree, which I'm getting that in applied behavior analysis. And then just, there was unfinished business. There's no doubt about it, the number one team in the nation dominating in this matchup. But I didn't want to go to the draft and I didn't compete in the NCAA tournament. And that was one of our biggest goals of the season. And also I was coming back from a stress fracture. So I was like, I want to be healthy. So I came back and I was like, okay, so this, this goes right. And it was the Ari McDonald show, Joan. Well, it sure helps when you have a player like Ari McDonald, and she is so special. You got to keep an eye on her. Joan, this is a little bit different for us and for our crew. What about for these players and coaches behind us? Oh, it's definitely different and things you have to do, but what's not different is when that official throws that ball up, they're ready to go. When we went to Washington State, flying in, canceling the game before that, not even getting to play some teams. It's just like, it's crazy knowing that that was like the new normal for us and for everyone out there. And just, it was a, it was a hard season. There's Adia Barnes in her fifth season as the head coach. She's a Naismith Coach of the Year finalist. And wow, what she's been able to do. They made it to the quarterfinals last year, lost to the top seed Oregon. And no doubt they would have been in the NCAA tournament had it been held, but they haven't been since 2005. She can't wait to get this team there. The Pac-12 tournament wasn't our best. We, we were okay, but we were also, um, the players were tired this year. So at, that, at the Pac-12 time, I felt like they got to a point where they were just like, oh, you know, we wait two more weeks to have the tournament. I think people were just kind of checked out, to be honest. It's the quarterfinal round of the Pac-12 Women's Basketball Tournament on the Las Vegas Strip. We have two-seed Arizona and seven-seed Washington State. In all of last year, we said, take and enjoy every opportunity Sabrina play. I am telling you, enjoy this opportunity to watch Ari McDonald play. Against Washington State, I wanted to see how we, we would respond, and we responded really well. well the Wildcats will get their 16th win on the season. They will await the winner of our next matchup, 11 seed Washington and three seed UCLA. But then I didn't like the way we, we bounced after that and, and lost to UCLA. And there you have it, Corey Close and the UCLA Bruins, the three seed move on to the championship game. So I, don't, I, I think mentally they were just, it was just long. And then they couldn't see their families at the Pac-12 tournament, so I felt like emotions were really high. We weren't in a good place as a team. We had a lot of breakdowns than we normally do. It made us come together. It made us, you know, we have to come together as a team. We have to have difficult conversations. Also with the coaches, like, hey, this is unacceptable. Everyone has to know their role. We had a meeting um, here on campus, like that next week. And during that meeting, there was like a, an honest meeting with a lot of constructive stuff. I remember leaving the meeting like, <laughs> like so annoyed. And they were annoyed at me. I was annoyed at them. We said some truthful things. And like I held them accountable. They held me accountable. And I was like, okay. And then after that, we just got better. You've got the Arizona Wildcats. Are you over there? Yeah! Okay, Stony Brook. For this program, it was, it was big for them. You know, this was the first time in a long time for, that they were going to the tournament. I mean, last year they got robbed. They got robbed from going to the tournament just because of everything that got canceled and things like that. And, you know, be able to see everybody's faces and have be so excited just to go to the tournament for the first time in a long time and make some noise in the tournament. Like, that's what we're really excited for is to be able to make some noise. And, like, we knew going into it, not many pe people believed in us. And we knew we had to believe in ourselves. And that was the biggest thing. Quote for today, play aggressive, play together, play for each other. That's what it's all about, play for each other. That's great. Okay, let's go. So our mentality as a team at that point was go to the tournament, win one game at a time. 
So I thought that we were playing better basketball, but the thing that I wasn't sure was we didn't have the NCAA tournament the year before. So I was worried that, okay, gosh, we've never done it. And our program hasn't done it in 16 years, so how are we going to respond? I didn't know. Have fun. Win one more at a time. Okay, let's go. First five minutes, we set the tone. We had tough games. Like, Stony Brook played well, and then BYU was really good. I think those were two really good teams. The buzzer sounds, and the Cats are victorious in the first round, 79-44. to And we'll now get ready for the tournament's lone upset at BYU. We definitely had a close game against BYU. It could have gone either way, especially for a couple of minutes there at the end. Arizona completes the ball game on a 13 to three run over the last four minutes and 40 seconds. And for the first time since 1998, and just the second time in the program's history, the Wildcats are going to the Sweet 16. And then after that, we were just like, we didn't talk about another team. It was like, if we were playing Stony Brook, Stony Brook. We didn't look at the brackets. It was like, we're gonna come and kill them. And then it was BYU, BYU, only BYU. We did that the whole tournament. And I think that's how we kept on surviving and advancing. It was just going in there and kind of proving ourselves that, you know, we are supposed to be here, that we do deserve to be here, and that we are Arizona and that there's going to be an impact after we're done. Wildcats playing in the Sweet 16 for just the second time in their program history, matched up against this Texas A&M team that for so much of the season seemed as if it was in contention to be a top seed. Walking the A&M game, walking in the hallway next to these like huge players that were super athletic, I was like, oh gosh, this is gonna be long. And they were like talking a little bit, like, oh, we're gonna kill them. I think they thought they were gonna kill us. Just the way that we, our swag, and we were like, we thought we could do anything. We were just like ready to go to war. Aggressive from the get-go. It's normal adrenaline at the beginning. It's normal. Get your second win. So don't do anything. Don't take the tough shots early. The Wildcats are in the Elite Eight for the first time by virtue of a 74-59 win over Texas A&M. Arizona and Indiana both making their first trip to the Elite Eight, the winner of which will make its first trip to the Final Four as the Wildcats have been following a formula that's been very defensive on their way to their first Elite Eight. So, we, yeah, playing against Indiana in the NCAA tournament was, you know, crazy. I, it was weird for me just because of the fact that I used to wear their colors. Do it for Bindu. This is her school she came from. Do it for her. Like, I know this means a lot to her. And so I was just going hard and just like, okay. We also get to do something we've never done before, go to the Final Four. So I was like, there's a lot of things at stake, but whatever you do, do not lose. McDonald has now reestablished a Wildcat high in the NCAA tournament. She had previously broken her coach's all-time mark in the previous round for 31 and now 33, and this is how it's gonna end. Be able to play them to go to the Final Four, it was, it was unbelievable. Trinity feeling it as this is her first trip into the NCAA tournament, like every other player on the roster, save for Yaney. And for the first time in school history, the Wildcats are going to the Final Four, winners 66 to 53. Hi, Ari. What does this all mean to you at this moment? This is what you said you were going to do, and you're on your way. This means a lot. It's a surreal moment. Um, literally, I was on Facebook yesterday, and yesterday made it a year that I said I was coming back. I mean, it's just crazy how things come full circle. I mean, you make goals, and to see yourself and your team achieve them, like, it's, it's crazy. And I'm just so excited. Like, we just beat a great team. This is a big deal. We just created more history. Oh, Hi. 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 
good. How are you? It was crazy because me, Sam, and Ari, we went to media that day and like did all this stuff. And then like I saw like tweets and it was like NCA, this has been deleted. And I was like, wait, like what was deleted? And I saw like we people were kind of bitter about whatever it was. So then I saw the video and I was like, wow. Like I I mean, did they do it on purpose? Did they do it on I I don't know, but it was crazy. People didn't believe in us, but then having that it almost like dialed it in even more that's like these people do not believe in us like they think we shouldn't be here and it's like let's go prove them wrong the seven game series with UConn I'd be like oh I mean seven game series I don't love that I don't like their experience they've been here but a one game series I like and I'm it takes one time to be hot one time to beat someone and that's that's why the tournament's so dangerous that's why there's so many upsets so it's one time we're the only three seed here okay so we can play loose we can have fun we can enjoy the moment and i want you guys because i have not enjoyed the moment i want you guys to enjoy the moment too like it it takes a lot to get here so when i was told oh there's only been two women that have coached their teams to the final four there were former WNBA players i was more like really and then like the first time two African-American females in the final four, I was like, really? <laughs> like, I was just surprised. And I remember talking to Don saying, wow, we got a lot of hats <laughs> like these, you know, pressure. But like, I remember thinking like, wow, but then it's an honor and a privilege. It's not stuff you pay attention to. So when you're told, you're like, wow, that's amazing. But I, I honestly didn't know those things. We look up to her, I mean, she's our coach. She's a mom, she's kind of like our mom, basically. She's a great speaker for women empowerment. You know, GSD, moms, like, get stuff done. I didn't realize it was such a thing. Like, I know it's hard, we usually don't do it, but I was doing what I do. So, like, I, I didn't know it was until, like, all of it went like, around. I didn't really know it was a thing, so I'm like, moms do it all the time. Like, there was other reasons, like, my baby normally wouldn't have been at the game, but, like, we didn't have a nanny. So we didn't have a nanny we can bring into the bubble. So like people don't know that stuff. So immediately after the game, I went to go get her because she's not with a nanny, she's with a friend of mine. So I want to like take her off her hand. So people don't even know that stuff. Like we didn't have a nanny at the hardest time of my season. I think it helps for her to make the family culture so much more important just because she is a mom. I mean, Salvo's on the coaching staff, bringing her kids all the time, being around them. It's a great feeling knowing that you're truly cared about and that they want you to succeed not only on the floor, but off the floor. There's been so many games that came out with like milk on my shirt and you just can't see it because we were in sweats. If we would've been dressing up this year, it would've been like the year from hell for me because I would've had stains all over. It would've been a nightmare. So in the tournament, there's little things I wouldn't have noticed. Like, I wouldn't have noticed we weren't in the highlight video. The players would point those things out. So my whole thing was like, screw everybody else. Like, who cares? Like, they can leave us out of the highlight video. Okay, let's show them. The internal locker room feeling of this Adia coach uh, team has supreme confidence right now. Right. Everybody else outside of that locker room, there is no doubt. I mean, it's just a fact. She truly built it up from scratch. and. And Arizona women's basketball was not a, is not a national name until now because of what she's done. So it still feels like the newcomers. When I look back at the Final Four, I mean, I'm thinking, wow, I'm coaching against, like, I'm going to be coaching against Dawn, Gino, Tara. Wow, they only won, like, 400 more games each than me. Like, I looked at myself and I'm like, oh, I've coached five years as a head coach. I've been coaching 10 years. And, like, Gino's been coaching, like, 30-plus years with, like, 11 national championships. Dawn is the Olympic coach who's coached, like, 20-plus years. Like, Tara has, like, 1,100 more wins than me. So I remember thinking, like, this is not fair. Very good evening, and thank you for joining us as the Wildcats are making their first appearance in the Final Four tonight in a matchup against the Yukon Huskies and what has been billed as a ball game pitting the old guard against the new kid on the block. But while UConn is making its 13th consecutive appearance in the national semifinals, this is in actuality a matchup against the most seasoned lineup as the Wildcats will run five upperclassmen out as starters against some Huskies that are relatively untested on this stage. It's going to be a close possession game. That's how it is this time of year, okay? Have fun. You've worked your ass off to get here. No one believed, but everybody in this room. No one else in the world believed that we'd be here, but we are. We have zero pressure. We have nothing to lose. 
If we lost today, it's, it's a great season. If we won, we shocked the world, so I'm ready to shock the world, okay? You always watch UConn on TV. Like, I remember in high school, I, I watched them four years in a row win the national championship. And it was just crazy to be able to see even you know right there coaching against us. I was you know I was a little a fan girl a little bit because I was like oh my god Dino. Always had respect for them and Coach Gino like they're a great team. Always have been since I was a little girl and I'm like we really get to play against them. As Kate Reese set to jump it up, and it's easily controlled by UConn into the back court. When the ball was tipped up like it was just go time. Pull up from 15 is not good and there's Yaney clearing it out. The Wildcats get a stop. Now on the offensive end for the first time here in their first ever trip to the Final Four. Out comes McDonald. She steps back in to try a three. She's got it down. Hit the first three, and I was like, oh, it's on. I already knew the feeling. It's on. <laughs> Harry up and down in the center circle. The Wildcat fans in San Antonio starting to feel it getting close. Connecticut needs threes. They need them in a hurry. They're not going to get them. The steal from Yaney. And the celebration is on for Arizona. Arizona is not done yet. Harry McDonald, Adia Barnes, and the Wildcats will play for the national championship. You cannot say enough about what Adia Barnes and her team have done in this postseason. The belief they have had in one another. I was so proud of my team. I, like, I didn't, this, all this is noise to me. I didn't even, like, understand that. So, like, with my team, in the moment, they had just done everything I asked. I brought them in, and I did bring them in tighter because I, I wanted to tell them something. I knew they wanted to hear it. Like, they were just looking at me, so I was like, come in tighter. And then I was like, everybody didn't believe in us because, like, it wasn't, like, at someone else. It was a moment I have with my team. I don't care what people think because it's my team. And they were, if you saw them after that, they were like, yeah. I remember I wanted, everyone wanted to put their fingers up, and I was like, oh, we can't do that. But I did, and we were like, Shh. That's our coach, like she has our back. No one on our team had a complaint about it. We all loved it. But what I realized after, I didn't know even people saw it. So I'm looking on Twitter that night and I'm like, oh gosh. Like it's like the, bird, <laughs> the birds are everywhere. I'm happy Adia didn't apologize. Everyone always leave Arizona out, so I'm glad she did that. And I'm like, hey, take it or leave it. Like, I love it Adia, keep doing it. When you have such a dynamic guard, and all the credit goes to Arizona and uh, Harry McDonald, I said going into the game that I don't think we've, we've had to play against a guard as, as good as she is, and she proved it tonight. Um, she just dominated the entire game, start to finish. That was a pressure situation. I've never coached in a situation with that pressure like that uncharted territory that now I have a taste of. I remember I did just said, you know, look around us, it's the only people that believe is us. And you know, this is the feeling that we want, but we want another feeling too. We want to be able to win the national championship. Like, we got this far, so why don't we win the whole thing? How do you feel like your defense has evolved over this time? Um, we've just gotten better defensively. I think, um, you know, we're, we're more aggressive and we're taking chances. Our rotation is solid, all those things. So I, I think it's just we're playing at another level. I've never played like this in my life. I was telling my dad, it was like an outer body experience. Like, I was just locked in and I was just like, at how I was feeling, I'm like, okay, no one can stop me. Like, I'm literally in my zone. Let's go, let's go. Ari, that defensive effort tonight. Uh, congratulations, Ari. Uh, congrats, uh, Ari. Is can I add one more thing? Uh, sure. my, my name is Ari, not Ari. Sorry. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Yeah, just heading into the press conference, you still have people saying Ari, and I'm like, Okay, whatever, I'll let it slide. But then as we kept winning, they kept saying Ari, and I'm like, okay, I'm getting annoyed. Like, that's not my name. Like, I'm trying to be nice and let it go, but my name is Ari. That's it. Like, I, I want to say something. My name is Ari. Like, that's it. Like, just get my name right. She 
she was really introducing herself literally to the country last year. And we were kind of giggling, saying, you can say it, girl. You get them to say your name right. Because we've been saying her name from the rooftops for years now. Oh, I miss her already. For the first time in the program's history, the Arizona Wildcats are playing for the national championship with a Pac-12 showdown against rival Stanford in the Alamo Dome. It didn't even feel like the championship. Like, we were all, I mean, we were nervous, of course, having nerves. Like I said, like a lot of us didn't have experience going to the tournament, let alone being in the championships. But we made it this far. Let's go win the whole thing. Okay, we don't care. We believe in each other. We're the hottest team in America right now. Hands down, no doubt about it. The best defensive team in America against a great offense. I think it was nice to play Stanford and obviously backing the pack because I mean, when has two Pac-12 teams or two teams from the same conference ever played in the national championship? Having Arizona and Stanford in the, the final game, it was just, Pac-12 was the best conference in the country. Like, we've been saying this, no one wants to listen. Everybody went like, oh, we don't watch you guys game. They come on too late on the East Coast. Now look, we have everybody tuning in. Like, I'm glad, you know, we got the chance to play against you know, another Pac-12 school that just created history. And um, you have an up and rising coach, Coach Barnes against Coach Tara, the GOAT. The Wildcats in the national championship game in their first final four. It, it was crazy, you know. It just shows that this is the Pac-12 Conference of Champions. I know a lot of people don't really think about West Coast basketball that much. And just be able to represent the Pac-12 in the national championship was unbelievable. The ball is elevated and this time controlled with relative ease by Brink into the backcourt for Stanford. Go to Lacey Hole, who's going to attack to the baseline's right side. Again, looks like she might have taken a step, but she's able to try to kick this one out toward Williams, but it's intercepted by Pellington, who's going to go end to end with the score. Shayna forces the sixth Stanford turnover, and the Wildcats now lead 21 to 20, four minutes and 48 seconds left in the first half. Besides Kiana, really, no one else had like big game experience like that. You know, being in the Final Four, being on, you know, on that kind of stage. Our, our team uh, showed some of its inexperience. And that will be how the half ends with the Wildcats in the national championship game trailing 31 to 24. It was definitely kind of scary just knowing that we were down. That was the first time we were down in the tournament, but it was crazy. I mean, she just looked so not nervous compared to us that it was like it was hard for us to be nervous after she came in and start talking to us. She was late coming out at halftime because she's back in the locker room pumping. She's still a breastfeeding mother and they have to warm up the bottle with the heat packs that are here on the sideline. She is doing it all. And for those of you who think this is too much information, I'm just going to tell you this. Let's normalize working mothers and all that they have to do to make it all happen. I think every mom is probably in that situation. Maybe she had to go like express milk in the bathroom. And but no one ever talks about that, but that's like a reality. It didn't distract me from the game. I was just like, oh, got to pump at halftime. And so we're all in our heads, like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And then she just comes out and she's like breastfeeding. And we're just like, oh, OK. Like, she's smiling, like, she's fine. And we're all just like, OK, OK, we're fine now. So I think it was just like a moment of like a reality check, like things are bigger than basketball. Why not just live in the moment, see what we can do, and try and get this win? Oh! I think back to the Stanford game. I think of how hard my teammates played. Like you had Shayna, that was probably the best game I've seen her play since she had like been with like Arizona. Bindu played amazing defense. And then I think about the shot. 54-53, Stanford has the edge as the Cats will inbound on the left sideline. 6.1 is what Arizona will have to operate with. The entire season came down to one last shot. We all knew who was shooting the ball. Just coming off the huddle, I was like, okay, she wants this play, I'm going to give it to her. And everybody in the gym, everybody watching knew the ball was going to come to me. They knew it. I was betting on it, yes. Um, I told our team, I said, you know, Ari's going to get the ball, and you got to guard her, and if you're close, come over and help. And, you know, so we, we ended up with three people on her. Five seconds left. Ari crosses over, trying to get some separation. I'm dribbling. I'm thinking, okay, can I go left? Can't go left. We got people on this side. We got Trinity. We got Bindo on this side. I'm like, okay, can't go left. 
Can't get any spots. Now she's just going to turn and heave it up. My hands are up. Anna's hands are up. Cam's hands are up. We're trying to contest, and then she lets it fly. It's going towards the basket. You know, it's in flight. I get the chills thinking about it. And there are two teams that, for the exact same split second on the exact same floor, are wondering what their fate is. I live for the big moments. There is no way I was going to pass it. Like, I have to take a shot. McDonald trap. Heaves. Can't hit. That is it. Stanford survives again. You know, uh, no matter what situation you put it through in adversity, I mean, myself, my teammates, we always fought the coaches. Um, man, just a, go a good group of ladies that I played with. Uh, yeah. Um, and I'll remember most is this ride. I mean, we had a great run in NCAA tournament. Um, we accomplished a lot that many didn't think we could do. And, um, you know, it was tough, but um, I'm very proud of my teammates. It was, it was hard just because we had gone so far and like being in the hotel for two and a half weeks and not being able to see our families and stuff. It was just kind of, it was a hard feeling just knowing that it was that last second thing. But I mean, at the end of the day, we, we came here and we did something that um, only one other team did, which was get to the championship. You live and you learn. Uh, I look back like it, it was so hard for me to watch the game. I probably wasn't on social media for a while. I was like, dang. This team is so special. I am so proud. Um, you know, we fought, like, we weren't the best team in the tournament. Um, we, no one thought we'd be here. We believed in each other. Uh, we didn't play a great game, but we battled. We played our hearts out, and we came within one possession. Welcome you to Arizona Stadium, and we welcome back the Arizona Wildcats. So I felt bad that we lost, and I couldn't bring home a championship. But I felt so good because they were like so, the city was so proud. We were all sad coming on the plane and getting off the bus and things like that, but seeing everybody's faces smiling and cheering for us, you know, you couldn't help but smile and, you know, feel like we just made a difference in the community. We're going to be there more, so everybody better watch out. When they see Arizona, we are the team they don't want to play, and we will win. I don't know when, but we will. So thank you, Tucson. We love you. Everything has to be aligned correctly. You need a little bit of luck. You need the right bracket, you need the right players, you need, to, you need to catch momentum at the right time to get there. I didn't realize in the process like how hard it is to get to that moment because that moment's passing so fast when you're in it, it's like you don't even take it in. Now that I step back and look, I'm like, wow, like can I ever get back there? Like how do I get back there? Now the bar is like really high. We're not no, you know, Sweet 16 team or Elite A or Final Four. We're, we're a national championship team and that's what we're going to fight for every year. We want to be in, in the top of those UConn and Baylor. We're here to fight and we're going to make our name known. For recruits that's looking to go play under Adia in that Arizona, it's just, you definitely have freedom. You're going to have a coach that genuinely cares about you on and off the court. You have a community and you have fans behind you that really love you and support you win or loss and you get to be who you want to be. I think it was that confidence that they had in each other and the synergy that they had. And it, we all saw what it did in the NCAA tournament and in the Final Four. And they were a dynamic duo and Arizona will never be the same. When you go to the Final Four and then to the championship game, I mean, that's the standard now and that's hard. It's hard to duplicate. And so I think it's finding the right pieces there are no shortcuts here. It's finding the best and believing in each of them to become a collective group and uh, reach for that common goal. And it's amazing when everyone does it together as special things happen. I'm not saying they're gonna be in a national championship game again. That might've been lightning in a bottle. I don't know. Her level of excellence isn't gonna take a hit Sure, they're gonna miss Ari. How do you not miss that player? Generational player, but they'll be just fine. They're gonna be so tough. They're gonna to be so much fun to watch. 
it's just different. Now I'm recruiting against South Carolina, UConn, like all these amazing schools that's hard to recruit against. But like when I first got here, I was recruiting against the bottom of the Pac-12. So it's just different players. So my goal is to like sustain success. It's not to just go there once and never go back there. It's like, how do I build a program and a team that can like, it, it's the norm going deep into the tournament and having a chance to win. And that's gonna be the challenge as coach. Because we gave ourselves a chance when no one in the world would have thought we'd be there. We just did things that people never would have thought we would have done, so I'm proud of our team. But now it's just gonna be getting back there.